Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome again uh, for our class, for our uh, dear kids on building character through the Quran. Last time we talked about uh, the purpose of life. Why are we here? And we agreed that the main purpose, and this is actually purpose number one, but we'll spend a uh, few classes in that. Purpose number one is to know, we mentioned this last time, to know, love, and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? This is what we agreed on last time. And last time we talked about knowing Allah. How do we know Allah? And we agreed that this is our plan. When you know Allah, you love Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you love Him, you worship Him. And I want you to be very patient with me because we'll explain uh, uh, we will we'll elaborate more on knowing Allah and then we'll explain today how do we love Allah and then uh, worshiping Allah would be our next class. Now last time we talked about Abu Hanifa and he had a beautiful story with some people who denied Allah and he, he taught them that it's actually very weird to deny that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists. And I think you know the story of, of the boat that he was talking about. If you did not hear about that, you can check our previous class. But to, um, to summarize that, let me give you just a similar example of what Abu Hanifa did. Imagine a big, imagine a ball. If someone told you this ball came by accident and no one made it, would you ever entertain that thought for a moment? No, because this ball, even though it is very simple, but it requires a, somebody uh, preparing, having some knowledge about it, and then creating it to serve a specific purpose. So because this ball, even though it is very simple, for it to exist, it requires a knowledge, a person, and a purpose, we can never believe that it came by accident. If this is the case with a small ball, what about this whole universe? This whole universe, how could we even entertain the thought that it doesn't have anyone uh, creating it, preparing it, and running it? Now, uh, we'll move to another point uh, about knowing Allah. You might say, but I do not see Allah. How can I believe Allah? How can I believe in Allah? And I do not see Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the answer is very simple. We know that there are many things that are not visible and we still believe in them. Why? Because we see the effect. Because we see the effect. The effect could turn us to the cause. Let me give you an example. Uh, we believe that there is electricity here. We believe that there is electricity here. And we cannot see it in the wires. But because we see the, uh, the light, and this is the effect, we believe that there must be electricity running in these wires. So I believe in the electricity even though I did not see it. When this marker drops down, I believe that there is a force of gravity causing that, even though I do not see that gravity. But I see the effect, and because of the effect, I see the cause. And let me give you another easier example. Can you imagine that a drop of ink would explode and make sentences? And these sentences would be so many that they make paragraphs. And these paragraphs would be so many that they make chapters. And finally, they are wrapped together to make a book. Can you believe in a story like this? This is exactly the same when it comes to the creation of the heavens and the earth. We can never believe that all of this was just an explosion and there is no one behind it. There is no cause behind it. That is why we believe that this book must be made by somebody. Even though if the, let me say, if the cover is missing. So if I have a book and the cover does not have the name of the publisher or the name of the, of the author and the, and the year, then uh, if I don't have that page, I will never conclude that this book came by accident and there is no one behind it. Just because you do not see the cause does not mean it does not exist. Another thing we should think about, and this 
should have been our exercise for last week, but I forgot to mention it to you, is that we need also to think about the creation, to look around and, and think about ourselves and think about the creation of the heavens and the earth. Why? Because when we think about this creation, we can understand some of the essential qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of his names. Like what? Let me give you an example. Imagine, imagine that you're walking in the desert alone, and then you found, let's say, you found uh, a phone. You found an iPhone. And this iPhone had a, uh, some manual instruction, an instruction manual. And it tells you exactly how to use it. And you're the first person in this whole universe to know about this iPhone. And you were able to use it. And, you, and this phone is programmed to call and to send messages and receive messages. And everything we know about the iPhone. Could you ever entertain the thought that this iPhone came by accident? No. Why? Because in order for this iPhone to exist, there must be someone and he has knowledge and he has a purpose in mind about this iPhone. Another thing is, when I, when I examine this iPhone and you feel like, wow, this is so great, I could never believe this. Just with this small device, I can call people, I can send messages, they can uh, receive, uh, and I can receive messages. This idea would tell you about the one who made this iPhone. He must have great knowledge, great wisdom. He must be having some power in order to bring this iPhone into existence. This is exactly the same way we can think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only way to, to know about Allah is to look around and you will get some glimpses of who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. We can never know how. This is beyond our understanding. But we can get glimpses of who Allah is. The one who brought everything in existence must be having power, must be having absolute power, absolute knowledge, absolute will, uh, because he must have a purpose behind this before he created it. He must have life. These are essential qualities that I know about Allah just by looking around and looking at myself. Let me give you an example just to get an idea of the power and the knowledge and the wisdom and the life and the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, did you know that in this universe we have more than 150 billion galaxies? More than 150 billion galaxies. And each galaxy has, has billions of stars. I know this is like mind-boggling, but just bear with me. Let's talk about our galaxy. It has billions of stars. One star is, let's say, the sun is one big star. Not that big. There are bigger stars than, than the sun in our galaxy. But let's take the sun as an example. You may think that this earth is so big. Did you know that the sun is large enough that around one million earth could fit inside this is how big the sun is it can accommodate almost one million earth inside it because of how large it is and how small our earth is compared to the sun now you might think about okay this is the universe this is the cosmos it does not have to do with me but did you know that your brain is that huge, even as vast as the earth? And let me explain that to you. Because that brain is like a world on its own. In order to function, it's, it's, like, it's, it's that significant. Let me give you an example about the brain. In order to get to appreciate the power and the knowledge and the wisdom and the will and the life of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without which nothing would exist because these significant great things around us point to someone who has knowledge not just a cause point to someone who designed it 
who created it, who have knowledge about it, who have power and wisdom and will and life in order to bring everything into existence. Let's talk about the brain a little bit. I know this will be a little bit maybe uh, difficult. It's even difficult for adults to comprehend and to fully understand, but it's good to be amazed. It's good to be amazed by this creation of your brain. Did you know that in, in there are so many connecting fibers and connections in your brain that would help you think and function well in life? Can you guess how many are these connections in your brain? These connections are so huge. I know this is something you did not hear about before, but the connections are 10 to the power 15. What is that? That means the connections are a thousand million million connections in your brain. In this brain, you have a thousand million million connections that would help you function well and think well. Still, you may not be able to imagine that. But let me, let me explain that uh, to you. If you want to imagine what 1,000 million million connections are, just think about a huge area as big as one third of the United States. Okay, imagine area that is around one third of the United States in its size, one million square miles. And this one million square miles are covered with a forest of trees that has 10,000 trees per square mile. 10,000 per square mile. And remember, we have one million square miles. Now, if each tree contained 100,000 leaves, the total number of these leaves will be 10 to the power 50. So you, you might be amazed at these connections, but these connections are in your brain. So don't think that this whole universe is so hard for me to comprehend. Even your brain is so hard also to comprehend. Do you think the one who, do you think this came by chance? And do you think the one who made it does not have knowledge or power or you, you may, when you thought about the iPhone, you said the one who did it, this idea, the one who's behind this idea must be very smart. Now, what about these connections? What about this universe? The one who is behind it is the one who must have absolute knowledge, absolute power, absolute wisdom. And we're very humble when we're saying we are knowing only glimpses of the attributes of Allah and the names of Allah. We can never fully understand the power of Allah. We can never. But we just look around to get a glimpse of what it looks like. So this is, uh, this is again an easy way, an easy exercise to develop your knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you think about these things, you get to know Allah. You get to know Allah as the creator, as the, the al-qawi, the all-powerful, uh, al-hakim, the all-wise. You get to know all of these attributes about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, this takes me to my main class today. Remember, we said to know Allah. Now we'll move to to love Allah. And you might think, but Allah is so great. Allah has this majesty. How would I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And my answer is, even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has absolute power and absolute knowledge and absolute will, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala draws us closer to him subhanahu wa ta'ala and he gave us that reason to think with and he honored all humans with the ability to think he honored us by preparing this earth for us so that we can live well so you came here and you find it actually ready for you to live in it was a plan, and you came and you found this plan. You find out that it has the water necessary for your survival, it has the food you need, it has the air you need, and this is part of Allah's love for us. Even though He is self-sufficient, 
and he is beyond our comprehension by his drawing us closer to him. And the reason why we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is because of his goodness subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though he does not need us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if somebody did a mistake and you felt sorry and you turned to Allah, Allah will accept you. No matter uh, how bad these things were, no matter what you did. When you, when you decide to change, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept you. Why? Because he is the merciful. And this is one of his attributes. We, we can now, we explained just glimpses of the, of the power of Allah. Allah is so powerful, but Allah is also so merciful that he would accept anyone who does a mistake whenever they decide to turn back to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will not abandon them. He will accept them. He actually, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught his companions uh, good things about uh, uh, the mercy of Allah. And he gave it in the form of a story that makes it easy for them to understand. The Prophet ﷺ, to show the, his companions how merciful Allah is and how he accepts people and how he's kind to them, to accept them. Uh, he gave this story about a man and this man was walking, was, uh, was riding his camel in the desert and his camel has the food, the drinks and everything he needs. But he was alone, and he found himself alone in the desert. He, he felt very tired. He said, let me take a break and have a nap. And then he slept under a tree, and then he woke up, and he did not find his camel. This camel, of course, is his means of transportation. He cannot move without it. It has the food and the drinks. So he found out that Kalos is almost dying because there is no place to go to, no food, no water, and he gave up. And he said, I will wait for my, uh, for my death, and I know I will die very soon. And he slept again. He was extremely exhausted and tired and worried. He slept again, and then suddenly he found his camel. And at this point, he was so happy that he thanked Allah and he did a big mistake. And instead of saying, thank you, Allah, you are my Lord and I'm your servant, because of his, the much joy he had, he says, thank you, Allah, I am your Lord and you are my servant. He made a mistake because of how happy he was. Now, the Prophet wasallam said that Allah is more pleased with us when we come back to him than this man finding his camel. Camel here is like his life, the food and, 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 and the water and, and, and the transportation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more pleased with us, is pleased with us when we go back to him subhanahu wa ta'ala and, 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 and be good people. So this is part of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also another way we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of this absolute mercy. One day the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa also wanted to teach his companions about the merciful God. And there was a lady uh, looking for her child and she couldn't find the child. She kept looking and looking and, and finally she found the child. So she hugged the child very closely. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa wanted to, make, to describe Allah's mercy to the companions in a way that they will not forget. So the Prophet said, do you think this lady could ever throw her child in the fire? They said, no, impossible. If she can prevent this, she will never let this happen. And the Prophet wasallam said, Allah is more merciful over his servants than this mom is over her baby. Did you realize how merciful and great Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to us? That is why we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we're satisfied with whatever happens to us because we know that it's coming from the mercy of Allah. Even if things are difficult for us, we still believe that there is subtle mercy behind this that we may not understand. We love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of his 
love for us. He made this whole universe available for us, planned for us so that we can survive. And he honored us to communicate with him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this leads me to my favorite uh, part, which is the ayah. What is the ayah we'll know today? I know it's you heard a lot about Allah as Al Qawi, Al Aziz, Al Hakim. He is the all powerful, the all uh, wise, uh, the Almighty. But we learn two attributes today that would make you love Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala more. And this is part of an ayah from the Quran. You ready to write it down? Just three words that you will be able to memorize. And one key word that I want you to know in Arabic and in English. And this is Wahua Al Ghafuru Al Wajud. What is that? It means and he is the all forgiving, the all loving. I want you to underline this word. Al Wajud, the all forgiving, the, the, the all loving. I know we're, uh, the class is going uh, longer than usual, but it's worth it because this topic is very important. And I want to make sure that we cover it fully so that you leave the class today with your heart full of the love of Allah. Because this love will lead us to the, the, to the third step, which is the worship, to express that love before Allah, no matter what happens to you. Now, so I write it in English. It says, and he is, he here refers to Allah, and he is the all-forgiving. Okay, the all-loving. By the way, this word, wadud, so you can memorize it in Arabic and in English. So this is my key word for you, wadud. So what is wadud? Wadud means the one who loves his servants. And it also could mean, uh, it also could refer to us as we are loving him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it works both ways. So wadud means the one who loves his servants, and it also means the one who is loved by his servants. Okay? So Allah is wa huwa al-ghafoorul wadud. Allah is the all-forgiving, the all-loving. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are signs of his love? Is that he created you? Is that he made everything available for you? He honored you as a human being and he accepts you no matter how bad ways you go and when you turn back to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all the angels are making du'as for us because they know we are so important to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us and to admit us in Jannah because they know our position in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, وَهُوَ الْغَفُورُ الْوَدُودِ And He is the all-forgiving, the all-loving. Did you notice something? Why does it say all-forgiving, all-loving? Why are these two together? Can you guys guess? Because you may forgive somebody, but not necessarily love them. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you do something wrong, He will forgive you, and He will draw you closer to Him. He will forgive you, and He will love you as well. So Allah does not have emotions like us in the way we do. No, Allah is absolutely above and beyond that. So you need to understand that even if you did something wrong and you turn to Allah, Allah can forgive you and love you too. So it's not like us. Sometimes we forgive and we find it hard to love, but Allah can forgive and love at the same time. Did you know why we have these two together? Because they are uh, complementary, completing each other to give us one idea. The idea is Allah can forgive and love at the same time. So because because of that love, we love him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let me explain more so we understand now and we do it, the all loving. Now, let's move to one last part and then we'll finish with this inshallah. I know this is big, but you guys got used to our style here. So I imagine that you're writing notes and parents are learning 
maybe learning something new and discussing it with their kids as well. So it, it's, it's, it's for both the parents and the kids. Now, uh, let me explain more. Why do, you, why do we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I write three words in Arabic that I actually shared with adults before, but I want you to make sure that you leave this class with the love of Allah full in your heart or, or filling your heart. So we love, why do we love anyone? Why do we love anyone? That is correct. There are many reasons you could love somebody because you just love them. Or maybe you're right because of the good they do to us. Maybe because they are so important and very intelligent and we love to know them. So no matter what, no matter how many reasons are there for people to love others, there are three major reasons why we love anyone. And I write these words in Arabic and in English. We love anyone because of the Jamal or the Jalal or the Kamal. Okay, it's easy to memorize in Arabic, by the way. Okay, let me write it in Arabic. It's because of the Jamal, because of the Jalal, because of the Kamal. Okay, what is the Jal Jamal, Jalal, and Kamal? Jamal is like the beauty and the good. Beauty does not necessarily mean physical beauty, but it's the goodness. And we already talked about the goodness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us. Allah gave you the eyes, the brain, so many blessings that you can never thank Allah enough for. Even if you're missing one, but you still have so many uh, blessings that you can never be grateful for. So this is part of the jamal, the goodness that you need to recognize in your life. Also, we love somebody because... Uh, even if somebody did something good to you, Allah is the source of all of the goodness in the world. Also, we love anyone because of their jalal. Because of, if, if someone, let's say, got the Nobel Prize or someone is so intelligent, we love to be associated with them. We love to know them. We love that they know us. We love to be with them in their company. So... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we explained, has the absolute majesty. That's why we love him for who he is, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We love Allah for who he is. And the kamal, we love people also when they are so good that they do no mistakes. So the, the, this is the kamal, the holiness. So basically, the jalal is the majesty, and the kamal is the holiness. Holiness means they are so good that they do no mistake. That's why we love people who are very close to Allah and do not hurt others and are forgiving. We love them because we know that they are rising above the normal qualities of people. They are so honest, so truthful. We love these qualities, right? So now Allah is the source of all of these. That's why he deserves all love. No matter what happens to us in life, and this is important, and this is also for the parents, just because you're going through a difficulty does not mean you love Allah less. No, we're so honored that we have a chance to be known by Allah, to be recognized by Allah. Imagine if someone had a chance to be the president driver or the president cook. They will take so much pride in that. Why? Because... They are serving the king, serving the president, and that is in itself a big honor. So we are honored that we are known by Allah, that we are recognized by Allah, that he gave us a chance to say, you are our Lord and you are, and we are your servants. I know these are big things, but it's important to start teaching your kids these meanings and these ideas from an early time, and even for us, because... Whenever you ask anyone, why are we created to worship Allah? No, it does not start with this step. We're created to know, love, and worship. And this is what we'll talk about uh, uh, next week, inshallah. وَمَا خَلَقَتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا يَعْبُدُونَ I created the, have, uh, the jinn and the humans only to worship me. Ibn Abbas said, worship means knowing. Because of that step. 
Worship is the result of knowing and loving. And that is why I started with these two, uh, because they will lead automatically to worship. And as you see in our explanation, we reached the point that we are honored to worship Allah. It's not an, a burden. It's not a burden. And this is what, uh, what I want our kids and even adults to know, that it is an honor to, know, to be known by Allah and to be a servant of Allah. I'll see you inshallah next week. What is our exercise? Again, contemplation. Yani thinking deeply about the creation of the heavens and the earth, the creation of ourselves, and how this thinking could make us recognize some glimpses of the attributes of Allah, and this will fill our hearts with the greatness of Allah and the love of Allah because of His goodness, because of His majesty, because of His holiness. What is the Arabic words? Jamal, Jalal, and Kamal. And I'll see you inshallah next week. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.